Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video of this Apache Spark series. In this video, I'll be talking about the actions in Spark RDD. So what are actions? Actions are those operations through which you get your result. The transformations which are the other operation on Spark RDD will never fetch you an answer. In a simple words, we can say, if you want your result to be printed or if you want your output, you have to call the action. The thing is, like all the transformations in Spark RDD are lazy in nature. They are waiting for action to be called. So when you call the action, then the trigger will start and it will give you the answer what you are looking for. So if you want result on your screen or if you want to fetch the result or output, right, you have to call the action. In today's video, I'll be taking the example of few of the actions of Spark RDD. Let's get started. For today's video, I'm making use of my same Scala IDE in which I've already have a beta pro a project followed by the Scala object in which uh, the Till this point, I've already have explained in my previous videos that how to set up the Spark sessions. What is Spark session? It's the unified entry point for the Spark applications because you cannot start with your Apache Spark until and unless you are having either Spark session or any of the context already initialized. So here we have already created the Spark session. Afterwards, using the Spark context, which is the entry point of Apache Spark functionality, we are making use of the first method of the RDD creation, which is called parallelize. So in this, uh, the very first uh, action example is it's called collect. So what is collect? Collect is simple words is, is equivalent of the print statement of your regular programming language. So what we are doing in this case, we first of all, we are creating the RDD using sc.parallelize method in which we are passing a collection, which is array, which is consisting of the elements one, two, three, and four. and uh, Using the collect method, we are able to print the result on the screen. The thing is, if you are trying the uh, state away, if you try to print the uh, output of X, it will be giving you some garbage value. So we are making use of MK string function of Scala. So what is MK string function? The MK string function uh, is nothing but it's uh, of the array is used to display all the elements of an array as a string using a separator string. So in this case, we are passing a comma as a separator. So uh, this is called collect. Collect is helping us to print the output on a screen. This is simple little first action we are having. Followed by next example we are taking of the action is, is uh, using, if you want to know the number of partitions, right? Although generally in a, in a general way, we never ever use the second argument of the parallelized method, but we do have the uh, concept of passing the optional argument as the number of partitions. It means if you want to know the partition size, then you can uh, go with the partitions dot size in this uh, Scala, right? And we are just printing the partitions, number of partitions. So first of all, we are creating the RDD using the same SC dot parallelized method in which we are passing the array in which we have got three elements followed by comma and then number of partitions, which are optional parameter. And using this, we are able to print the number of partitions. Uh, in the case of Python, if you're using PySpark, then get num partitions are the action available over there. But in the case of Scala, we can print this using the partitions dot size. We'll see the output together later on when I run this uh, project. Third example of this is your reduce method. So what is reduce here? Reduce is nothing but to aggregate. So if you want to aggregate your result, right? In this case, what we are doing, again, we are passing the uh, array as a input to the parallelized method because we all are aware that parallelized method only take the collection, Scala's collection as an input. So we are passing an array of four elements and we are trying to call the reduce. Reduces do what? Reduces will give you the aggregated answer. It means it will be working in this way. One plus two plus three plus four will give you the answer 10. Although reduce is a binary operation. It will only, it will first take first two elements, one plus two, Okay, it is, it will be three, then three will be added to three next element, then that output of that will be added to the fourth. It means it will means it will take the first only two arguments at one time, two elements at one time. It means there will be a two operand at one time. So one plus two, three. So three plus three, six, six plus four, 10. In this way, reduce works. The reduce help us in getting the aggregated answer. So it's my third action example. Afterwards, we are having very regular kind of a like aggregate operators, we already have used these as aggregate operators in SQL. So in the same way, these are available as the actions in Scala RDD. So we are trying to print the max of this means it will be four, min of this one, sum of it, it will be again giving you 10 answer, then mean of it and standard deviation. So it's a regular little actions available that we can call on this Spark RDD. Afterwards, we are left with the two more actions we are trying. In this case, we are uh, using the 
another parallelized method but this time around we are passing the input as the key value pairs so in this case j it will be serving as the key this is my value again f is a key this is my value and a is a key and j is a key so here first of all we are printing all my previous uh, like uh, these uh, variables this rdd uh, thing f g k i z afterwards what we are doing is we are now using the another action it's called count by key it will give you the count like how many times j is appearing how many time f is appearing how many time a is appearing because it is counting the key as i've already told you that j f a j these are the keys so it will be giving you result in the form of map so count by key is another action which is giving you the number of keys occurrence right frequency of of the keys right at the last what we are doing another action uh, coming up it's called save as text file if you want to store the result right on in your desktop in your laptop right anywhere right so we can uh, make use of save as text file so in this case we have to give the path right of your system one thing I want to say like uh, the path which you are giving right it should be following the linux extend linux notation because generally when we give the path in windows the direction of the slash are different so you can see you have to change this manually that's why it, it, this is different right otherwise the the regular uh, uh, windows will have this kind of arrow this kind of sorry slash but we have to give the this one right so this is the like thing you have to take care of so these are all are the examples of the actions let's run this project and let's see if it's working fine or not right so um, we have to run this as a scala application so let's see so let me take this little up so that you can see the result properly so all the results will be displayed here one by one so let me show the uh, answer here it is starting from here i guess so first is it is printing the it is printing what the output of collect which is one two three four as i've already told you collect act like a regular print this is number of partitions two because we have passed two as an argument afterwards what we are getting is the reduce answer which is 10 right then we are getting the outputs of other uh, operations let me check out the max the min the sum the uh, mean then the standard deviation at last we'll be getting the count by key answer you can see i've already told you count by key will give you the answer in the form of map key value pairs a is appearing one time j is appearing two time f is appearing one time at the last to get the answer of your uh, this one the count by key uh, save as text file we have to go to your desktop let me go to the desktop here now let me first close this magnifier so that the things will be more clear right so we are now going to the desktop okay this is my desktop and let me check out you can see the this is count by key output is available here and we can see this with the uh, notepad and that's this is the output right this is the output of my save as text file i hope you must have understood the concept of actions from this little video for rest of the content i'll be coming up with the next video thanks for watching guys see you next video